One day, a bunch of people from different countries working on peacebuilding programs gather to design and implement peace education activities. During this time, they realize that everyone understands something different when talking about peace education projects. However, before we can start talking about peace education, we must first think of peace. What is peace? How does peace relate to conflict? Peace is not the absence nor the management of conflict, but rather the constructive prevention of conflict and promotion of human rights, equality, diversity and compassion. Peace requires the employment of skills, values, attitudes that offer constructive alternatives to conflict. What is the connection between peace and education? It is very important, like all of us, to find a way and a match of these two words and most importantly, to see how they can connect. If peace is something that can be learned, then it is the job of all of us to educate ourselves, to be peacemakers, peace builders, etc. This is the task of peace education, to transform the minds of all of us in order to be a peaceful world. Now, let's see how the peace education connotation has developed throughout time, from a baby to an adult. The history of peace education is arguably as old as human history, as cultures throughout the world have learned and then taught the next generation how to live peacefully with others. What is the history of peace education? Firstly, we will start with the modern period. Peace education scholar Jan Harris described this modern peace movement as the beginning in the 19th century Europe with many intellectual efforts to learn about violent conflicts evolving into socialist political thought and spreading to the United States and elsewhere before the World War I. Scholars then began to study war and started trying to educate the public about its dangers. More and more people tried to persuade each other and their governments to use mediation instead of war to solve international conflicts. Secondly, in the early 1900s, women became an especially active part of this modern peace education movement. At this time, peace educators began campaigning for social justice arguing that poverty and inequality were causes of war. These campaigns were often led by women. Maria Montessori is one example of an influential middle 120th century theorist who found new connection between peace and education. She linked teaching methodology to peace building, hoping to help the next generation avoid the violence of authoritarianism. As a result, in this period, it is very important to keep in mind the two words that, that were spread around – poverty and inequality. Thirdly, international organizations, including various United Nations bodies, as well as many non-governmental organizations, have been growing in influence and importance since the end of World War I and have contributed greatly to the movement to achieve global peace. Although the League of Nations failed, the establishment of the United Nations achieved new levels of global cooperation norms and ideas. The Charter of the United Nations has since served as inspiration for the development of peace education as educators is aspire to help the global effort to have safe succeeding generation from the scourge of war. Fourthly, peace studies became a more serious academic subject after the World War II. The threat of nuclear war throughout the Cold War encouraged many scholars to devote their studies to creating a sustainable peace. Since the 1980s in particular, peace education scholarship 
has developed many di directions. Some have emphasized mi minimizing masculine aggression, domestic violence and militarism. Others have sought to foster empathy and care in students. And many have argued that critical thinking and democratic pedagogy are vital. As a result, in this period, it is very important to keep in mind the following words. Words that have been spread throughout many years. Sustainable peace, domestic violence, empathy, and the last one is critical thinking. Fifth, with the Convention on the Rights of the Child, created in 1989, peace education and human rights education took a new importance as this type of education came to be seen as a fundamental right that all children should, ha should have. One of the most important scholars of UNICEF has written, it is significant that the frames of the Convention on the Rights of the Child viewed the promotion of understanding, peace and tolerance through education as a fundamental right of all children, not as an optional extracurricular activity. Learning about and learning for peace is one definition that we will focus on, definition presented by Space for Peace in 2010. Learning about means obtaining knowledge and understanding of what contributes to peace, what damages it, what leads to war, what does peace mean at each level, what is my role in it and how are the different levels connected. Learning for peace means learning the skills, attitudes and values that one needs in order to contribute to peace and help maintain it. Learning to deal with conflicts without the recourse to violence, learning to think creatively, learning to apply the methods of active nonviolence, or learning to deal with cultural differences in a constructive way. There are several definitions regarding peace education, but they all share these common words. Living in coexistence, skills, knowledge, values, Attitudes, self-discovery, self-awareness, learning, creativity, equality, empowerment. And most importantly, all these words are under the umbrella of do no harm approach. In peace education, there are several tools used according to society needs, context, content and target groups. In the end, there is one remaining question. What is peace for you?